Oh, that's a fish, guys. That's a fish. Oh, it's a bite. Eat it. Eat it. Yeah. A bit bigger. Wow. Look how he swallowed those eggs. What's going on, everybody? We're here, back in the Puget Sound again. It's still that time of the year. The pink salmon are, oh, almost tripped. The pink salmon are running in pretty thick right now. I've been going out the past few days fishing for these pinks and I've been doing pretty well. So today I wanna do something a little bit different. The challenge for this video is going to be to catch my limit, which is two pink salmon in this video using the lure that I kind of bashed in the last video, the buzz bomb. So this is the buzz bomb that I like to fish when I do fish the buzz bomb. This is the 3L size, obviously in hot pink. I have, I think this is 15 pound braid, just as my main line straight down to the buzz bomb. And then I have the little bumper, a bead, a swivel, and then I have two of these hooks facing opposite directions. So that's the plan. We're gonna throw this buzz bomb out. It's the middle of the afternoon, and typically I like to fish in the mornings, but today we're out here in the afternoon. Hopefully we'll be able to get on some fish. As I was coming to this spot, I saw some people landing a fish, so that's a great sign. Let me show you guys the water clarity real quick. As you can see, it's real clear. Let me get you guys set up over here and we'll get fishing. And if you guys wanna see more pink salmon, regular salmon fishing videos, be sure to go down, hit the subscribe button. And also, if you guys want to see whatever gear that I'm using in these videos, I have the links to all these down in the description below. So you can go down and check out those links and get yourself some of the same gear that you see in this video. So if you guys saw my last video, you'll know that the reason why I don't really like these buzz bombs is because of the real sporadic action as it falls. So to kind of circumvent that and improve on that a little bit, the way I like to fish this is by doing pretty fast jigs. I don't like letting it sink for too long. And I like to jig it at about this, this pace. I find if you let it go down too far, the salmon might have a hard time hitting it. So if I keep it up in the water column pretty consistently, I think it presents a better opportunity for the salmon. So this is my first cast. Let's see what we can do today. I'm excited. I'm hopeful. But you never know. So let's see what we can do. The tide right now is actually coming in. Low tide was at, I think, 4.40 p.m. Right now it's 6.03. So I just started fishing around six. We're a little bit into the tide coming in. And high tide today is gonna to be around, I believe 11.30 p.m. And there's a bit of a swing, so. Hopefully that'll help bring the fish a little bit closer to shore. But we will see, time will tell. Oh, that's a fish, guys. That's a fish. Let's go. Fish on. Let's go. There's one, guys. Pretty quickly, that was like about five minutes into fishing. Can't complain about that. So we'll see how these double hooks hold up. See if my theory stands true. But this definitely feels like a pink. I don't want to force it too much. So I'm going to loosen my drag a little bit. Ooh, my heart's pounding. Oh no, it came off right when I looked at you. Oh no. <laughs> oh. How? Double hooks. Why didn't that work? I'm shocked. I think I had too much confidence. Oh man, that was brutal. All right, well, at least that gives me good hope that we're gonna be able to get on one today. It's hard to jig now that my arms are shaking with excitement. Let's see what time it is right now. It's like 6.09. It's been literally five minutes into fishing and we already hooked one, so that's a great sign. Ah. Uh,
I want to show you guys one more time exactly what I'm using. So this is those two, these are those two hooks. So you can kind of see right now they're sitting like not great, honestly. I want them to be more like this for sure. That way they're sitting like this or like, like that, that'd be sick. But let me know, again, I'm new to buzz bomb fishing. So let me know if there's a way that I can improve my landing ratio of these buzz bomb fish because I'm losing a lot. Hopefully the next one that we hook that we can land, but we'll see. Let me know though, I really am curious. I wanted to take a quick break from fishing for a second, just to show you guys that sunset. The sun's just starting to set right there over the mountains. And there's some people out there fishing. It's just beautiful out here. That's what it's all about, y'all. Yo. All right, y'all. I am calling it wraps for tonight. Got that one fish we hooked into. Could have managed to land it, but that's okay. We're gonna be back here in this exact spot tomorrow. So for you guys, it's gonna be in about a few seconds, but for to me, gonna go home, gonna get a nice sleep in, and I'm gonna see you guys right back here in three, two, one. All right, it's day two now. And today we are actually gonna be doing something a little bit different. My local river just opened up a few days ago. So we're gonna be actually heading over there today to go fish for king salmon. My car here is all loaded up and ready to go. And I don't wanna wait any longer. So I will see you guys on the river. All right, we made it to the river. Look how gorgeous this is. I'm super excited. Now the current is moving pretty quickly and that's exactly what we want for bottom bouncing these eggs. If you guys aren't from the area, this time of the year, which is basically like the end of August, early September, the kings and the coho, and this year the pinks return from the Puget Sound into the local rivers and streams to spawn and create the next generation of salmon. At this time of the year, all these salmon come from the ocean, which is way down river all the way over there. And they come and they swim up this river and then they spawn. So in this section of the river, we are allowed to keep and harvest kings. So that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing today. And like I said, we're gonna be bottom bouncing eggs. So. Let me go up to get my gear and I'll show you guys exactly what the setup is that we're going to be using today. All right, let's get our gloves out. Oh. And the reason why we need these gloves is because we're going to be throwing eggs today. This is one of my newly learned methods or newly practiced methods, I should say, is bottom bouncing eggs with a little weight. And these gloves are a little bit tight, a lot of it tight. <laughs> so I had these eggs drying out pretty much since last night. So they are super dry, which should be better for bottom bouncing now. So what I'm gonna do is just portion these up into maybe quarter size chunks. Cut a bunch of these just now. These are some pink eggs that I caught, or I guess that I cured yesterday after I caught a nice hen at the Spokane Street Bridge. If any of you guys are from the area, you might know where that is. It's a, it's a shit show. <laughs> All right, so now that we have a couple of these cut up, wipe it on the waders. The setup I have here is just 15 pound braid with a six foot fluorocarbon 15 pound bumper that comes down to this bead, snap swivel, a little weight, and then a swivel and about a one and a half foot leader to a, I think size one or two hook with an egg loop knot tied on. So when I put my eggs on my egg loop knot, I like to just 
thread the loop out first and then grab my ball of eggs. I like to hook it through the skein portion first because it's a bit tougher. Now this is a little bit bigger of a gob that I like that I like to fish, but this will do just fine. You just want to make sure that the hook is exposed like that or a bit more than that actually in most scenarios. But now that we got our eggs on, we got our nice flowing river in front of us here. Gonna cast a little bit upriver and let this just drift with the current down river. And I'm gonna be feeling for little nibbles. And if I feel a bunch of little taps, I'm gonna let it take it and then I'm gonna set the hook nice and hard. That's why this braid is super useful because you're able to feel everything. So feeling those little taps, those little bites, when the salmon takes it into his mouth and spits it back out is very useful. Got one, boys. We got one. It's a little shaker, but we got one. What do we got here? A little shaker, but. Oh. Looks like a little, little Jack Coho. Oh. -hoo. Oh, he's a feisty boy. Oh man, this is cool. Not quite the size, whoa. Not quite the size that we're after. There it is, right there. Nice little Jack King. All right, we got the skunk off our back, boys. That's always nice. Those bites really get your heart pumping though, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. But we're after something bigger. So let's try and do that. Look at me, I'm shaking. I can't even put this egg on. That wasn't a very small piece of skein either, which is interesting. And uh, he hit us right about there, so. I'm gonna try and just keep doing that same drift. Maybe there's some more stacked up in there. But that was pretty cool. Oh, that was a good bite too. They're in here, guys. Why am I missing so many? That was a good bite. Now, it could be, well, it could be but there's like a little sculpin out there or something. Very possible. So, gonna have to uh, land it to find out. Oh, fish just rolled right there. To me, it looked like a pink. Oh, that was a bite for sure though. Oh, I missed that one. That was a good bite. Oh no, that was a real good bite. Damn, I'm bad at these hook sets. That's a bite. Oh man, that was a real good bite. Oh, it's a bite. Eat it. Eat it. Come on. That's a bite. Oh my goodness, no way. Did you guys see my rod move? No way that I am missing all these fish.
got another one. Another little shaker. I'm not complaining, but I'm just wondering where the big guys are and why I'm only catching shakers. Another little Jack King, about the same size as before. Oh. Oh. He's not ready yet. Oh. Spit the hook. <laughs> That's okay. We need your big brother, man. How many times? Quick release. Nothing wrong with that. All right, so we just got those two little kings. We are here looking for something a lot bigger than that. So we're gonna keep fishing here. It's a good sign though, because there's obviously kings here and they're obviously biting. So that's a great sign. I'm very optimistic. Yeah, let's get back out there. Let's get a big boy. Let's get the big brother of that fish. Got one. Another shaker feels like. Oh, it's a bit better size, actually. Oh, it's a bit of a much better size, actually. Oh. Oh my gosh. First cast back on that, boys. I haven't really seen the fish yet, though. Oh, yeah, a bit bigger, a bit bigger this time. Take my time with this fish. Ooh, hardly an adult, but I'll take this fish every, any day. It's a bit bigger than the last ones, so. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. King baby, let's go. I'll keep this buck. Wow, look how he swallowed those eggs. Totally swallowed them. That was not coming out. Okay, let's uh, let's get this guy up over. Uh, on the bank there. We did it. Got a king. Oh, whoa. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna bonk him, put him out of his misery. Get my bonker right here, put him down, and uh, say goodnight. Okay, he's out now. And I'm gonna take my Stringer, put him on that first, take my stringer, and now I need my pliers, which are here, I'm going to try and get this uh, oh shit, hook out of its mouth, okay, got it, let's go, all right, and now the last thing, will be to bleed her, him, bleed him out. Oh, 
I'll take my knife. Cut the gills like that. Put my knife in the ground over here. And now I'm gonna massage the fish a little bit. Try and get this blood out because I'm pretty sure it didn't really bleed a lot. Is that an egg? That's probably an egg that it ate. I don't think this is a female. All right, guys, we are going to end the video right here. We were able to, I think you guys saw me hook three or four kings. We were able to land that nice big one. I'm so excited, so grateful to be able to share this experience with you guys. I wanna be an inspiration to you guys to come out here just like this and bank fish for these salmon. If you're like me and you don't have a boat, it can be pretty challenging to come out here and catch salmon. So I wanna be able to be a resource for you guys to enjoy content, to be inspired and to learn all things about bank fishing for salmon. So if you guys wanna see more of that, go down, hit the subscribe button. And if you guys wanna see more content just like this, I'm gonna throw up my Instagram right here. Go check that out.